Hey guys, so let's jump straight into it. What we need to do is we need to be building the base shape of the button, which obviously, as you can see, we're creating rectangles with little bevels on the edges. And like with most of the other processes, when you're creating these types of silhouettes, you know, we're using the Boolean operator to subtract the edges to create this uh, pretend bevel effect. We then need to essentially duplicate that shape, but then inset it so we can start to build out this bevel effect. And I'm just dragging the little notches over just to get like a, re a relatively similar shape to what they've done in Warcraft Rumble. And then using the pen tool, I'm just going to sort of trace around the edges to sort of create these areas which will catch the light giving that fake 3D effect. And I'll carry this process around the, the entire edge of the face. So at this point, what I've essentially done is I like skipped the video, but just mirrored the notches and then I grouped them together to create a mask. And as you'll notice, I wasn't being too precious with like how precise I was being with the notches. You know, I intentionally let them sort of like be quite messy and sort of bleed over the top of each other because the effect that we're going to be using sort of depends on like a bit of an overlap of the the edges right now as you can sort of see i'm just sampling the colors to sort of get us roughly something similar to what we're looking at and then obviously applying the blur effect here which is the aspect of this that sort of makes the UI look less like a vector UI and something more like a hand painted one, uh, one that's been painted with like a brush of some sort. Moving on to the stroke effect, you know, we can sort of see that there's this sort of highlight that sort of goes across the entire button face. So it's sort of quite important to make sure that you're including that as part of the uh, stroke gradient that we can see. like with most of the uh, text that we seem to be seeing in these free-to-play mobile titles we're dealing with a stroke and a drop shadow it's really sort of straightforward it seems to be consistent across the board So right now what I'm going to be moving on to is the highlight that we can see. The highlight is simply like a gradient transition and it's actually animated. So if you take a look at the game, you'll see that, yeah, it's like a sort of a, a swipe that sort of happens through, through the button just to give it like a little bit of a call to action. So this is really sort of like quite straightforward just trying to find like the right blending mode and stuff like that to get me something similar and obviously tweaking the values and those types of things to sort of bring those levels you know sort of down to a similar range so one thing we'll need to start thinking about is how we're going to like get the little rounded corners and the way that i worked it out in my mind is we'd use obviously the border radius and if you apply the border radius to a mask then anything inside will kind of you know sort of be clamped sort of nicely to the, to those radius rules so it's kind of cool so we can sort of see that by applying the border radius it has actually affected everything inside the button so we'll just need to go in and correct that and just make sure that the 
the internal like beveled elements that we set up are not you know being affected by that so we'll just need to undo those bits there so duplicating the the main button face we now need to sort of focus on the slightly larger part of the work which is the yeah that sort of purpley uh, base plate and then using the same techniques all we're doing is just sort of adjusting the rectangles and the corners and stuff like that to make it fit a little bit better with the uh, shape that we're going for now the, the problem that I sort of found when doing this is like it's on one hand it's really awesome that all of the you know Figma components are live and that you can tweak as much as you want but when you're working with a complicated sort of button setup like this is you know there's lots of moving parts and lots of different layers so you know it kind of gets a little bit sort of tricky at times to yeah select things or you know sort of try and figure out what's what really so i do encourage you to probably name your layers and stuff as you go um just as a, a better way of identifying you know sort of like notches and you know that those types of uh, layered elements essentially all I'm doing is just cleaning up the duplication um, removing the elements that we don't need and just moving those beveled elements into the correct positions to sort of give us that uh, slightly stepped bevel effect that we can see Once again we're just going through and we're just sampling the colors that we can see to bring us closer to the example we're referencing So already at this point I'm starting to sort of feel quite good about like how it's looking. Probably done like as much as like we need to do in order to sort of capture the essence of the, the main book. So tweaking this gets us um, yeah, something relatively close, which is, uh, yeah, it's looking quite smart. So with this view, like the button is kind of like a little bit isometric in that it's kind of tilting towards the camera, but the camera is an isometric camera, so there's no real perspective to it. So here, like in order to get that sort of like fake 3D effect, all I'm doing is just removing some of the notches we don't need anymore. Um, just trying to figure out which ones we do need and um, yeah, doing a little bit of a clean up and then just yeah, making sure that all the, the nodes are pointing in the right direction, really. And then, essentially, it's just a case of adjusting the, yeah, the colours to sort of, yeah, sort of recede further into the background. Well, this effect's looking, like, pretty good. It's a little bit fiddly. Um, I'm not sure if I'd want to build an entire UI like this within Figma. But um, yeah, it was a, it's quite an interesting uh, challenge. You know, I thought to myself, I wonder how close we could get.
you know, with the uh, whole sort of more st stylized sort of hand painted type of UI. And I think, you know, so far, you know, the comparison is pretty decent. It's sort of getting there. I'm just putting like a little bit of an inner shadow towards the bottom just to give it a little bit more depth and just sort of helps lift it off and group everything together. Essentially what we're doing here is we're just trying to catch like a little bit of the the edge highlighting just sort of to bring it a slightly closer to our hand painted effect. To be honest we get it gets pretty pretty good we get quite close to it. But you're never really gonna get that sort of like brush stroke effect, you know, if the the artist is using a very specific, you know, textured brush, we just won't get that, but we can definitely get something So the noise and texture options are awesome. Like the plug, this plugin generally is just so good. Just start off with a shape and then just customize it to, to what you want. And then just find in a blend mode, essentially that sort of, you know, puts a little bit of sort of noise and variation over the top. And what that helps with is it just reduces that sort of like vector flat shapes and stuff like that um, effect and sort of just softens it. So guys, this is pretty much it really, you know, I can continue to sort of tweak things to sort of get it slightly closer, but you know, I really encourage you to fire up Figma and see if you can replicate your favorite UI that you've come across and um, see how far you can get with it. As always, please sort of let me know in the comments if you're struggling with anything or if you'd like to see anything in future videos. And um, please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. Yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.